you might be fucking it. God fucking damn it. Welp. My life would be easier if I weren't so focused on Shit that makes it more difficult. Which might feel redundant. Mm, but, but why? Oh. If I only had a brain, dude, my, I've just, I've never been a singer. I think that you know, I was kind of made um, for a while, I thought that I was made God. Legitimately to, to get drunk and hang out on a boat. Um, that's kind of the beginning, middle, and end of that one. And... Whatever you think's your, whatever you think is your life calling, I encourage you to pursue it. Now I got pretty, pretty into the as as people in my former life would say, their former life. on the mini, the mini boogeyman video, but at the same time, you know, that shit is, it's what makes you who you are. And again, there are redundancies and cliches. I'm tying it drunk and disorderly. And I feel like I'm gonna go pound fish on this. Alexa, what's the weather? The current weather is 79 degrees Fahrenheit with cloudy skies. Tonight, you can look for clouds with thunder showers with a low of 64 degrees. One more thing, I have a morning updates routine that will provide you updates on the weather and your deliveries for today. Do you want to try it? No, thank you. No problem. Boy, if there was another one, we would have problems. It does feel intrusive at times where it's like I ask something very simple like that. And then it's like there is an app um, to listen to animal noises. Would you like to hear this? I'm like, first of all, that feels, mm, I don't know if the word is presumptive or presumptuous. That feels like you're being a dick. It feels like you might be making fun of me. Um, <clears throat> maybe because it's a little spooky or something. We're doing, we're doing a fucking flashbang. Flashbang drunk. More flash.
It's probably because I'm insecure. Who said that? And where are they now? Hmm. I was thinking that that was not <clears throat> Magnum Flashaboo, but probably would have worked fine. Uh, you really can't go. I don't know. Try to go too heavy. Like, try see where that line is. With the drunk and disorderly before you know you you tying sparse with this fly is pretty stupid because how it was designed what it does and and why it does what it does part of that is significant flash and if you think about what flashaboo material is outside of the you know the pearls or the the mirage line it's it's opaque it's a piece of plastic and so you actually with enough with like lots of it you get momentum you get opacity um you get some degree of bulk and you get these big these pop these flashes so when you go sparse it can be very effective at achieving your desired goal of creating sparkle um but when you're adding it as a tail in place of marabou in place of schloppen um going big or going a lot and dense does a few things, uh, not the least of which is creating now you see me, now you don't. I'm finding rabbit. Creating a mess. There we go. I'm hitting notes on that one. All right, we're going tan. So this now you see me, now you don't thing is... It's one of the reasons why I love tying with Krennic Flash. I, it, it, Krennic Flash is a little more... There's some texture to it, but it's, it's the flash that Chuck Craft arrived at or used for his design of the the Crelex, which is a phenomenal fly. I use it. That's Frank's Red Hot, man. I put that shit in everything. And yeah, there's some body to it. The, the really cool property that I like about Krennic Flash is, is it has this it breathes a little bit. It's textured, but it's it's not rigid. And so it flattens out like on your strips and then on the kills, it sort of breathes and, and gets, at, because it's textured, it gets, it doesn't flash from the same angle. Um, if you just think about a piece of flash of boobian flat, it's only gonna hit your eyes or create flash at one angle um it, it will only perfectly reflect at one angle i'll say that otherwise you get you get variations of um i don't think i've started recording the the video but that's okay you get variations of the angle uh, you get variations of that maximum going down to zero. With Krennic Flash, it's it just goes to zero on the strip, 
And then on the kill, you just get this wide selection of, of non-zero flashpoints th that are all sort of coming from different flashpoints, which um, whether or not it looks lifelike, uh, I don't know if it's that I don't care, but it looks fishy as hell. And, and it, you know, fish eat it. So that's, that's kind of where I think the, what the goal is for me. And if you're a tire who wants to create something that looks, you know, exactly like a fish, then you probably don't want to use 60 strands of flashaboo for a tail. But, but again, with the angle of aforementioned dangle, um, the, the whole mess of Flashable kind of like self collates in, in that it, it is all flat in one direction. And, and then you get these tips and you just get these pop, pop, you get these really big flashes. And when you have a lot that's self-collating with no other material, no other marabou, nothing else in between it, tends to happen a little more easily. Um, maybe not more easily. It tends to happen with um, to a greater degree. And, and it adds, you know, it gets hit by water, and so it creates tail wobble, it gets hit by the water that's coming off that mallard flank. And it really does change. Hold, please. Forty pound bite wire that I use as the articulation wire, the joint, the connecting material, the that's it. So yeah, it um, angle dangle flash. It's a much more exaggerated. Maybe that's what I was going for. Now you see me. Now you don't. Where it's and, and it and it goes from not flashy at all. So the you know if you, you think of like one piece of flashaboo, one piece of this shiny stuff is on top of another it is blocking it is therefore only as shiny as one of the pieces so when you have all of them basically choking each other out there is no flash and then when it pops to the side or gets some water in between it on a kill or just gets sort of shimmied by some water coming off that mallard flank um and you just get these momentary flashes that that hit most of the pieces of flashaboo and yeah it's a good thing i believe that's a martha stewartism but truly and those flashes are, and <clears throat> if for whatever reason Tommy's listening to this, he, he's going to know his own words because he's said them so many times. But for anyone else that's not listened to any of his stuff, I've, I've said it. I, I'm just going to keep saying it. And, the, and I'm also going to keep saying shit like, oh, I've said it so many times. 
because I think the credit where it's due thing is important. Um, that that flashpoint, that kill, you know, as you're walking the dog, not only is there such animation in the fly, right? You're watching it with it and and importantly retrieved with a straight line tip pointed straight at the fly none of this jerk retrieve stuff that is effective if your fly is something that is weighted um if you care very little about the angle of approach if you are fishing consistent water speeds that can be effective and it can be effect an effective way to override casting angles um with the hair bugs and specifically with the drunk, because you can, f your retrieves can last forever. Uh, you can get this thing going back and forth and, you know, throw in all these different kills as you get more comfortable with it. And if you're not doing that with a straight line, I mean, these strips are that. That's it. You're just, you're throwing, you're, you're, you're throwing sawdust into a, I, I don't know what it is. Um, milking a gerbil, I've heard that's more with the two hand strip fishing mice, but if you don't have a tight line and, and you're doing that, then your effort just those little taps, it doesn't do anything. So I'll, I'll, I'll watch anglers, and I apologize for the condescending laugh, but I'll, I'll watch anglers not fish a fly for 30 strips. Just They're just tapping in slack. And so sometimes you, you know, I like the rod sweep for um, sort of correcting my approach and, and correcting where, from where we have pressure applied to the fly relative to the current speed, direction, um, current velocity, I should say. And yeah, if you're not paying attention to that stuff, it's, it's in the water so long. It can be in the water so long to be really effective. I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to, it's just going to be getting pushed to the side and, and you're not getting near, I mean, you're not approaching a hundred percent of what the fly can do. And you're probably going to come away with the opinion that I came away with, that many people have come away with that. It's, you know, it's a pretty good fly. Um, but until you spend time actually learning and it's, one of the reasons I love this fly and how many times have I said that it didn't just teach me about fishing or tying hair bugs. It didn't just teach me about tying. It taught me about fishing it because in order to achieve skipping all the epoxy and shit, I'll do a little bone dry. I'm not going to lie. Um, in order to achieve, to get the most juice for your squeeze, you got to be, you have to cast and retrieve intelligently. And that teaches you so much about, oh my God, when you start seeing the, and I'm well aware, right? I was not a always a guide. I was not always fishing streamers from a boat. I would hear people talk like this and it's just like, dude, stop trying to sell me whatever you're selling me or stop trying to sound like you know what you're talking about. But it, it is unavoidable the number of times that I watch a brown trout, small mouth, uh, eat on the kill 
And, and even two handing flies, it's this, it's these momentary pauses and, and all, you know, when I'm two handing, which a lot of times it's, you know, I, I like to get the max, max out a, a game changer and you max out a game changer on the, the two hand burn. Not necessarily cause I'm doing it, you know, cause they need, they need high speed. I can only achieve it with the two hand. Uh, it's just like, that's where the, the fly shines. And that sent me down a whole different, gosh, tying crafty changers that are castable and, and presentable and retrievable with a seven weight and single strips, um, as well as on the, the two hand, but you know, sync rate, what the head's doing um momentum of the fly on the cast with how much water it picks up relative or due to the amount of craft fur it has and so all, all of these things that that's why I love fly fishing so I love tying and and a lot of this stuff was sort of encouraged if not required um when when attempting to to really max out the what I was getting from the drunk. And you know, there there's a lot of that's a lot of the drunk is in the swim bug. And I'm not gonna say it's a dumbed down version. It kind of is. I, I have tying and and fly design envy of of tommy with this fly because it generally speaking is very simple and there are certain parts that are or can feel like a pain at first notably the head um but wouldn't you know it as you understand more you start to enjoy it a little more the difficult parts because those are the parts that really count. It's all this stuff. Shit, I didn't even know I was recording for the most of the back hook. It's um it it's all deserving of attention, but it is certainly less thoughtful. And I, I think that that approach, and I, I talked about it with on that mini dungeon video with the, um, that confidence and man, there are, there are a good number of drunks that I tie and on the first retrieve, maybe, maybe on the second or third, I'll kind of let it get soaky, let everything start acting as right as it's going to. But I pretty quickly identify that, that this is not the fly. And it's generally the head, so I just razor it off. And um, I've done an adequate job with the body. So I just get to tie the head again. But, but that, like, the opposite of that. Right, the I, I throw it in the water, or man, if I have a, I'll go through and tie a handful of these, and maybe we'll lose a few. We'll lose the, we'll lose the real juice. Someone is is heartbroken, and I say, have no fear. And I do truly believe this that part of my offering is that I have a fuckload of all these flies. And at some point I also had at least a small chunk of barred rabbit. All right, we'll go on paint. Fuchsia, holy smokes. So yeah, the opposite of that when I, oh man, when I get that 
give someone a fly. Hey, you know, give this a couple, couple of trees. And I see him working it and it is, that's what I wanted. Jesus, there's no stopping us. There is. Conditions, um, angler burnout. That's very much a thing. Where in hour three or four, there's just, it's pretty clear that um, the best is not yet to come. The best has arrived and is now, the best is no longer an option. Um, I don't know where I got on that one, but, but it's a real, it's a real phenomenon that I don't know, man, eat your fruits and vegetables. Like, shoof, we're about to be on a soapbox. Can't expect to catch a stream of fish. It's like, dude, are, are you not sort of doing these videos both as educational, but also trying to promote your guide business? Maybe don't tell people that it's as hard as it can be. But at the same time, I like to be honest. And so it's not that it's really hard to catch fish on a streamer. It's that it, and even really hard in general, that doesn't really sit well with me because it's not true. It's just like being good at anything. It takes time, which I know is... Sounds like a cliche. We are switching to GSP. I think this is 150. It just takes time. And as it relates to promoting my, my job, my source of income primarily, getting a good guide to which I, I like to believe that I am to help you along that that path um, it, it's one of the reasons I love doing what I do because I, I enjoy fly fishing a lot enough to quit my job and move to Tennessee and God it was just... It's daunting, the amount of stuff out there. And then you actually feel like you might be doing something that's worth a shit. And you gotta, I mean, I imagine if, if you are like the vast majority of um, people alive on, or on Earth today, then you're... You're on social media and you're seeing that, you know, fucking Carter or Brian with a Y catches all these fish. And it's like, damn, dude, I thought I was doing, I thought I was finally doing some cool shit. And I'm going to say this, I really hope I don't forget this wade fishing spring creeks and freestones and a lot of the the famous blue ribbon trout streams in pennsylvania i took so many fucking skunks like 10 12 10 12 hour skunks oh there's some chartreuse already in there Hello. You hear that extra ass I put on a few of those knocks because it wasn't going down. Yeah, I got <clears throat> got my ass kicked a bunch, and on the good days. Like a, a very good borderline trophy trout was in the 
you know, 14 to 16 inch category. Catching an 18 inch fish in some of those places, wade fishing with a streamer, get the fuck out of here. <clears throat> so as Chili from Bluey would say, run your own race. I think the way she says it is hotter or more inspiring, I guess is what I'm that's what I'm going with. But it really is like if your own race is catching more fish than Brian, by all means focus on that and your own nymph. And, um, dude, dip, you know, take a, take some hot dogs out with you. Dip your shit. If your goal is to catch fish, more and more fish, dip your flies in Procure. I don't understand if that's the goal, then like... Be more effective at your goal. If your goal is to watch a brown trout come screaming out of a bank that you, uh, not just a bank, a, a specific indentation in the bank that you identified, casted toward and engaged your, your brain and hands and that fly you spent some time tying, um, and then watching that thing, you know, maybe shark it for a second, for a couple little back and forths. You try to keep your shit together. You don't. You pull it out of the water, put the fly into your shoulder, start looking at your buddy who did not see the fish. So you can tell him or her or them that it was easily 22 but it was it was 15 I'm not gonna lie um if that's your goal then the you, you don't get procure um you you have to learn how to do it well and then you know another part of why i enjoy doing what i'm doing and, and why given the right anglers which Honestly, it's most. Um, I, I've gotten caught in thinking that, you know, some people are only going to want a nymph or they're not going to be happy if we don't catch fish or whatever. And and I, still offering it up saying, hey, this is, this is kind of what, what the deal is, which is streamer fishing a lot of times depending on conditions and um, it's just not the most effective way to catch fish that day on a trout stream. Do you want to learn a skill set that will afford you the, the ability to fish for any species, um, you know, anywhere, GTs, carp, musky. Peacock bass. Like, I'd rather, honestly, I'd rather teach someone how to more effectively use um, a spin setup than nymph. And, and, and I'd also rather take less of a tip and go through another day of, of watching you know, career making fish pictures just swim away because uh, someone can't keep their shit together. I'd rather do it all because it's so much more fun than the actual fish catching part. And I'm not saying that that part isn't fun. That's clearly the most fun. But there, there is such a crazy cool part of 
maybe how I've developed this. And it's not just unique to me. It's I've I've learned a lot from some good guides, fly and conventional, mostly salt, where you just with education, you take away from it stuff that stays with you for a very long time. And so I will get a picture, like someone will send me a picture of a a trout or a fly, and you know, maybe it'll have a question if it's with the fly, and we'll kind of go back and forth a few times, or they're sending me a picture of a trout saying that, you know, it ate on the kill or something, you know, it ate on the pump fake at the boat. That shit is so cool. That's yeah, like I want everyone to be catching two footers on every trip. Um, but that's not how it works. And yeah, to give give someone a shortcut in that learning curve. I don't know if that's steepening it. Steepening? Um, or flattening or something. But if I can do that over the course of the day. <laughs> I was going to say I can sleep well at night, but it, it, that has nothing to do with me sleeping well at night. Um it's probably if I have been able to achieve that during the day, I'm probably pretty tired, man. Those those days, the high education days, everyone, me and both the anglers, we are gassed at the boat ramp. Because it's it's mental, the whole thing is mental engagement all day. It's when you're fishing the fly, you're, you're a thousand percent focused on what's happening. And, and I am too. And my forehead, like I, I actually need to start. I have been doing this, giving some attention to what my body and face is doing. My forehead gets, it's like my eyes are tired. I'm just staring the entire time at flies in people's hands and retrieves. And it's not like I'm talking the whole time, but depending on what the angler wants, it sure might look like a lot of talking. Get that a little more centered up. This is going to be the greatest fly ever. Now this is this is gonna be a kind of quick and dirty. Which honestly, they fish the best. When you go super dense, which I I went fairly dense here. Gave it a couple packs. Each each variation that you have in the angle of your head and able to do all something like that. Giving folks seizures at home. That's all right. <laughs> You'll be okay. The more dense you go, the more influential each cut is. Each, you know, the, the total angle of the head, the width, everything becomes much more important. And you add a lot of the, the float recovery as Tommy calls it, the buoyancy, as you you increase your density of hair, which is important, you need to find that that happy medium. And from a tying perspective, I will say that 
the head could be a little more dense, or sorry, the, uh, the collar could be a little more dense on this one. And that is an area that if everything sort of seems right with the bug, but it just, something's not there. Sometimes I'll, I'll take some chops off that collar Or, you know, it's maybe it's a little too center weighted. Or there's too much on one side, so it's always, and you know, some of it could be just friction as, you, as you're pulling it through the water. If one side has more material on it, the fly is going to tend to drift in that direction. And if that material is buoyant, on your kills, so in between your strips, it's going to tend to float upward in that direction. And the more, you know, the bigger your flies are, you know, musky flies, the, the more buoyant they are, poppers and what have you, um, the more you can see the influences of, of all these little things. That is all, I'm looking at a computer, this is mirror image, this is not as easy as it might seem. I'll kind of fluff that up. Man. Let's go pound some trout. Uh, I could put eyes on, but I'm not going to because I get worried that they create a smooth side on the sides when I don't want, I don't want that. I am going to give it just a little bit of a... Just a little bit of a, just a, just a weedle bit of a, if you could only see the thoughts I have in my head. Maybe you understand why I stay up all night alone with dead deer. Alright, I ain't gonna catch some fish. Have fun out there, everyone. Or if that's not what you're into, if you if if fun to you is um being miserable and not having fun and doing shit that's not cool. So enjoy doing that. Or don't enjoy it. Maybe you like God, what would that even be? It's fun to be miserable, so you're not really enjoying it. But that is what you enjoy. I guarantee you.
there is a condition. Uh, th this bone dry like soaks into the the packed hair. I did end up making that pretty dense. I'm pretty good at tying. And what it really does is kind of prevents it from. I used to want to like seal it, which I don't want to do. I want to have it hold its shape mostly. And if things are feeling funky, deer hair, bucktail, have a cool characteristic wherein they are natural and water also does something cool to them where if, if your fly is acting a little funky, I just take the this and, and break that epoxy so that the water basically hits all the pressure points that it wants to hit on your retrieve and the ones that it hits more that would influence your fly more negatively if, if they are incongruent um, those pieces are pushed more so they they end up you know, getting moved back, they end up becoming less influential than if they were epoxied. So it can be kind of a, a decent way to right size something that ain't right. That wasn't in focus, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Does it? Does it? <laughs>